Hi, I'm Dr. Steve Warner, SAT Math Guru and Associate Professor of Mathematics. I've been tutoring SAT Math for the last 12 years and have helped over a thousand students with their performance, many getting a perfect 800 or near perfect score. In this video, I am going to give a brief overview of the SAT with an emphasis on math. The SAT consists of 10 parts, three math sections, three critical reading sections, two writing sections, one essay, and an experimental section which may be math or verbal. Each section begins with some directions which you should make sure you memorize long before taking your SAT. The beginning of each math section also has a small list of formulas which should also be memorized. These include some basic area and volume formulas, the Pythagorean theorem, and two special triangles. Each of the three math sections has a different number of questions. There is a 20 question multiple choice section which you have 25 minutes to complete. There is a 16 question multiple choice section which you have 20 minutes to complete. And there is a 25 minute section with 18 questions. The first eight are multiple choice and the last 10 are free response questions also known as griddens. The directions for these gridding questions are given in the exam right before they begin. Again, these directions should be memorized before you take the SAT, otherwise you risk wasting time during the exam. Let's talk a bit about the multiple choice questions. Each of these questions comes with five choices. You get one point added to your raw score if you get one of these questions right, and you lose a quarter of a point if you get it wrong. So statistically speaking, random guessing will not help your score. If you can eliminate one answer choice from the five, then guessing will increase the expected value of your score. I recommend taking a guess when you can eliminate one or more choices. Now let's discuss the grid in questions. On your answer sheet, there are four columns with space on top to write your answers and bubbles below. The computer only grades what you have marked in the bubbles. Never mark more than one circle in a column or the problem will automatically be marked wrong. You do not need to use all four columns. If you don't use a column, just leave it blank. The symbols that you can grid in are the digits 0 through 9, a decimal point, and a division symbol for fractions. Note that there is no negative symbol, so answers to grid ins cannot be negative. Also, there are only four slots, so you can't get an answer such as 52,326. Sometimes there is more than one correct answer to a grid in question. Simply choose one of them to grid in. You should never try to fit more than one answer into the grid. If your answer is a whole number, such as 2,451, or a decimal that only requires four or less slots, such as 2.36, then simply enter the number starting at any column. These two examples must start in the first column, but the number 16 can be entered starting in column 1, 2, or 3. Note that there is no zero in column 1, so if your answer is zero, it must be gridded into column 2, 3, or 4. Fractions can be gridded in any form as long as there are enough slots. The fraction 2 over 100 must be reduced to 1 over 50 simply because the first representation won't fit in the grid. Fractions can also be converted to decimals before being gridded in. If a decimal cannot fit in the grid, then you can simply truncate it to fit, but you must use every slot in this case. For example, this decimal can be gridded in as 0.167, but 0.16 or 0.17 would both be marked wrong. Instead of truncating decimals, you can also round them. For example, this decimal could also be gridded as 0.168. I prefer truncating because there is no thinking involved and you are less likely to make a careless error. Never grid in mixed numerals. If your answer is two and a quarter and you grid in the mixed numeral as two and a quarter, then this will be read as 21 over four and will be marked wrong you must either grid in the decimal 2.25 or the improper fraction 9 over 4. There is no guessing penalty for grid ins, so you shouldn't leave any of these blank. I recommend having a favorite number in your head that you will grid in if you have absolutely no idea how to do one of these questions. So what kind of math is tested on the SAT? There are four main problem types, number theory, algebra and functions, geometry, and probability and statistics. These categories are a bit rough, and not everything tested on the SAT exactly falls into one of these categories. For example, counting problems are on the test. I always group these with probability and statistics. The good news is that you most likely know all the math that you need already, so it is not necessary to relearn any mathematical theory. 
Reviewing these topics will happen naturally as you practice SAT problems. The not as good news is that many SAT questions are intentionally designed to trick you. So even though you know all the math, you still need to prepare for the SAT. But when preparing, your emphasis should be on learning SAT-specific strategies and practicing SAT problems, not learning more math. So how hard are the math questions on the SAT? There are five difficulty levels. Level 1 questions are very straightforward, and Level 5 questions are generally very tricky and may involve two or more steps to get to a solution. Each math section roughly progresses from Level 1 to Level 5. I like to think of each math section as split into three parts, the first third being easy, the second third medium, and the last third hard. The 18 question section would then actually have six parts, three for the multiple choice and three for the grid-ins. In other words, the eight multiple choice questions go from easy to hard, and then number nine, the first grid-in, is easy. This progresses up to number 18, which is hard. Some more good news. You're allowed to use a calculator on the SAT. I always recommend using a TI-84 or something comparable. So how is your SAT math score determined? You get one point for each question you get right, and you lose a quarter of a point for each multiple choice question you get wrong. You get your raw math score by doing the following computation in your calculator. Number correct minus number of wrong multiple choice divided by 4. From there, each SAT has its own conversion chart that turns your raw math score into your scaled math score, which is a number between 200 and 800. To get an 800 in math, you usually have to get every question correct. Once in a while, there's an SAT where you can miss one question and still get a perfect score. To summarize, there are three math sections and possibly one extra experimental math section. There are two types of math questions, multiple choice and grid -ins. You most likely already know all the math being tested. You need only learn SAT-specific strategies. And last but not least, each math section roughly progresses from easy to hard questions. Familiarity with the exam will help on test day, so be sure to know the exam inside and out before taking the SAT. This is essential if you want that 800 score. For more information on how you can get an 800 in SAT math, or to have specific questions answered by me personally, please click on the link below.